QuickBooks Online 2021 Make Loan Payments Using an Amortization Table. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We're now going to make loan payments with the help and use of our amortization table, which we set up in a prior presentation. To do so, let's open up some of our reports. We're going to duplicate the tabs up top, right click on the tab up top, duplicate it. We're going to right click on the tab up top again, duplicate again, opening up then our balance sheet and P&L profit and loss report. Going on down then to the reports on the left hand side. Opening up the balance sheet report. So we're going to open up the good old balance sheet report. Close up the hamburger. Hold down control. Scroll up just a bit to that 125 range. Change it up top ending at 1231.21. Then we're going to run that report. So we'll run it. And so there's where we're at at this point. Let's go to the second tab on over. Let's do the same thing for our P&L, opening up the reports on the left-hand side, opening up the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement, range change up top, ending at 1231.21. Run it, run in the report, closing the hamburger, holding control, scrolling down up just a bit. Now we're keeping it at 125. Okay, so if I go back to the first tab on the balance sheet then, we're going to be making a payment on the loan. So we're going to have the loan down below. It's on the books at the $72,000. we are going to imagine then our first payment then is going to be at the beginning of this month that we're working in. That's going to be February. So we'll put in that first payment here. And then the second payment we'll try to make at the end of the same month just so we can see the difference between the first and second payment. When we make the payments on the loan, we're going to be having something that's coming out of the checking account. So that'll either be an expense form or a check form and we might actually physically write the check we might do it electronically you might have bank feeds that would help you to process an electronic payment for example the problem will come into play however in that we have three accounts that will be affected we got the checking account that will be reduced we have the loan account that's going down and the interest that will also be affected that interest being kind of like the rent on us using the money which will then be recorded on the income statement the second problem is the fact that that interest and principal portion will differ, although the loan payment will remain the same, making it very difficult to automate something like bank feeds or like a standard type of transaction because of that change that will happen uh, as the loan goes. Now, there's a couple ways you can deal with that. One is you might say, hey, look, I'm going to depend. And this is this is something bookkeepers could work with like a, an accountant or tax firm that to help them out with adjusting entries so if you want to say hey look i'm going to do everything kind of on a cash basis here with regards to the loan and i want to work with a particular accounting firm that then is going to help do the accrual adjustments and any other kind of adjustments then you could come up with a system and say hey look every every time i make a payment on the loan i'm just going to record the entire thing to this one loan account reducing the principal not breaking out the interest portion of it I'm going to depend on you then, accounting firm, tax firm, whoever's doing the, the adjusting entries at the end of the period, or possibly yourself doing the adjusting entries at the end of the month, to then break out the, the interest and principal portion based on the loan amortization table. So if you did that system, then you can actually make it a little bit easier and you can use something like bank feeds to do a really simple type of transaction and then just realize that you have to do an adjusting entry possibly at the end of the month or end of the year so that your financial statements are correct periodically. That's one way you can deal with it. Another way you could deal with it is of course to get the amortization table, which might be provided to you by the, the person who gave you the loan or whoever you took the loan out with, the bank or whatnot, but you might have to make it or you can ask your accountant to give you the amortization table and calculate one for you. And then you can use this to break out the principal and interest portion per payment, which is what we will do now. So I'm going to select this first payment here and I'm going to say, okay, let's imagine we're making this payment here. We're going to make the payment. Let's go back on over and I'm going to go to the first tab and hit the drop down, the plus button. We could do that with an expense form, a check form. We could put it directly into the register using these two kind of forms as well. We're going to go ahead and use a check form here. So let's open up the good old check form. I'm going to hold down control, scroll down just a little bit to get down to that 100%. We're going to make the payee is going to be Chase. We're imagining that being the bank. So I'm going to type in Chase. And we have Chase as a customer. So we're going to need possibly a vendor. We should probably make them a vendor. Chase vendor 
and I'm gonna say tab, it's gonna add the vendor, I'm gonna add them as a vendor here. Notice that the bank is not really a vendor or a customer, but we need to put a name here for it and choose one of the others, so the vendor would be more appropriate when we make the payments. Gonna go down and we're gonna say this payment is gonna be at the first month of the second month of operations that we're doing, so I'm gonna say this is as of 020121. I'm gonna keep the check number, which is populating automatically here, and we're going to say that I'm scrolling down and now we're going to make the payment. Now the amounts then are going to be affecting the cash account, which will be up top indicated by the check itself. And then the loan payment is going to be, uh, the loan is going to go down and then the interest expense is going to be affected as well. So let's, let's start with the interest. So let's see if they have an interest income account. So they have, they call it interest paid. That's a little deceiving. I don't really like that name because, you know, you might have accrued interest. It's not really necessarily the interest you paid. It might be accrued. So I might go in there and change the name. I might go, eh, you know, I'm a little picky, but I'll change it. I'm going to go up top, right click on the tab up top, duplicate this tab. And I'm, I'm not going to add a new account called interest expense or something like that. I'll adjust the account that's currently there so that I don't, I don't add accounts unnecessarily. I'm going to go into the accounting tab down below and I'm going to go down and say, all right, interest expense down here is it's going to be down here somewhere. I'm going to change it from an interest expense to just interest or, or interest paid to interest expense. I also want to put it on the bottom. So instead of making it an, an expense account, I'm going to move it down here to the other income. So it's at the bottom of the income statement. So I can kind of differentiate the expenses that are related to my operations versus my financing kind of interest. So I'm going to do that. So let's go. I'm going to change two things on the, the name and then the account from expense account. So let's say, let's edit this. I'm going to say edit. I want to make it not an expense, but an other expense. That'll put it at the bottom of the income statement. And then we're going to say interest paid. I'm just going to say interest, not interest paid. Let's do that. And then close it and changing the type. An account may affect your accounting report. If that's okay, I think it'll be all right. And then I'm going to go to the first tab again. And let's try it again. This time I'm going to go to interest. So there it is. That's the one we want now. And we're going to pick up the amount from our amortization table $300 so $300 on the interest I'm going to say this is the first payment in the amortization there's not going to be any customer that we're going to be applying this to next we've got the loan is actually going to be going down so I got to pick up the loan amount so I'll just type in loan payable maybe there it is now the tricky thing is I'll say this is the first payment as well payment and then we'll pick up the amount. I'm going to put a T there. And the amount's going to be here. So we're looking at this number because it's going to add up to the total payment of that. That's going to be the actual amount that goes uh, down, decreases the checking account. So 1058.73. So let's say, all right, this needs to be 1058.73. And then the total check then is going to be at that 135873. Let's check that out. Is that correct? 135873. So there we have it. So that looks good. It's a little bit more complex because we have these two kind of items that we had to break out to. What's gonna, this going to do when we record it? Decrease the checking account by that $1,358.73. Then the interest expense on the income statement, kind of like the rent on the money, is going to go up by that $300 decreasing net income. And then the loan's only going to go down then by the $1,058.73, bringing our new principal balance hopefully to this 70,941.27, if the principal balance is then at that, then we can be verified that we did it correctly, at least to some degree. So let's go ahead and save it and close it, and then we'll check it out. Saving it, closing it, back on over to the balance sheet over here, where I'm gonna freshen it up. So we'll run it again, run the report, fresh report, scrolling down. Well, let's look at the checking account first. Checking account, We've got a decrease in the checking account for that 135873. So that looks good. And then I'm going to go back to the report. And we also know that uh, the loan should be going down. So the loan balance went down. There's the balance now, 70,941.27.
Is that right? Yeah, 70,941.27 ties out to the amortization table. Notice how easy it is for us to do that when we only have one loan account tying out to one amortization table. If I was trying to break out short-term and long-term portion of the loan, it's going to be more difficult to tie out to the amortization table. If I had multiple loans in one loan account, rather than breaking them out separately, it'll be more difficult to tie out to the amortization schedule. So that's why I would recommend having one loan account per loan in the short-term loan or current liability section and then breaking them out periodically with adjusting entry processes at the end of the month or year. If I go into this loan payable, there's the payment 105873. Going back up and back to the balance sheet. Let's then go to the profit and loss where we can see the interest calculation running the profit and loss to make it fresh. So we're working with something that's fresh. There's the $300 interest down below. Okay, so now we're going to do it again. I'm going to go back to the first tab. We're going to do it again. I want to keep it in the same month so that we could see these two transactions like in February. But we're imagining a whole month has passed now and we're making the second payment. We're going to make it as of the end of February, which is going to be this payment. So now I'm just going to ungreenify this one, right click and ungreenify it. And I'm going to greenify the one we're working on. So we'll greenify the second one. So then this one's slightly different, right? So if I did this again, if I go back on over and say, all right, let's do it again. We're imagining a whole month passed. Time flies because um, we are having fun. And that's what, as you've probably heard, when you're having fun, the time grows wings and fly. Okay, so then this actually, instead of a ch an expense form, I'd like to populate the check form so that we could see that it'll auto populate to some degree with us. So let's close that out. Let's instead use the plus button and the same form we used last time, which is a check form. And then we're going to say this is going to chase the vendor again. We're chasing the vendor. That's the name of the bank. And then it says, do you want to pre-fill this check and overwrite your entries using the, this item? I'm going to say yes, because that's typically what we would want to do. And if it was the second month of operations, notice what would happen. It's, it's trying to help us out to basically match what we did last time. That would be great, except for the fact that, again, this problem that we have the interest and loan payments will differ each time. That's what makes it difficult for us to memorize the transaction or use something like bank feeds as easily. So if I was to then say this, I'm going to say this is as of the end of the month. How many days are in? Is there 28, 29, 28? I knew that in 2000. Like last year, there was 29, I think. But in any case, 2012. And so what we got to do is then adjust the interest and principal portion each time. So we got to go, all right, now the interest portion is 29559. So now it's at. 295.59 for the second month like a month later and then the principal portion is the 106314 so this should be uh 1063.14 for a total check amount of the 135873 total check amount 135873 so what's this going to do when we record it then it's going to write the check for the same amount decreasing the, the checking account just as the last payment did for that 135873. But it's going to record interest not at 300 like it did last time, but at the 295.59 and decrease the loan by the 1063.14, leaving us with a loan balance, hopefully, if we did it properly, matching our amortization table after the second payment of 69878.13. Let's check it out and see if that happens so that's what happens so we're going to say save it and close it so we saved it and closed it and for some reason i was over here on the right tab but i'm going to then go back to the uh to the balance sheet and then see what happened run the report hold down control scroll up just a bit and then in the checking account we're going to have the two checks that are the same you know amount like one's at the beginning of the month and a month later we had another one and the checking account amount is the same. So no difference there. Scrolling back up top. However, if we go down to the loan account down here, where we have the 6987813, which should tie out to our amortization table. And it does. So like we did it right. And then go back on over. If I go into that, the loan payable, then now we have a difference between the two. And that's kind of where the issue is lying. That's where the issue lies, if you want to find it. That's where you go find it because it's lying right there. And then I'm going to go back on over and then we're going to go then to the P&L and let's run this report. 
making it fresh and then scroll down there's the income statement going into the to the interest item then again we have a different amount of the allocation of the interest here as well let's go on back up top let's open up the good old tb trial balance and i'll pull this tab over to do it and we'll check our numbers we'll go to the reports on down below type in trial balance good old tb trial balance and then we're going to go up top and say ending at uh, 12 31 2 1 run it close the burger are we at one two five percent we are and there's where we stand we'll try to print these trial balances out so you can check your numbers at the each of the end of each of these uh presentations